Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Today we're going to be doing a requested video. You guys asked what regrets slash mistakes have I made on the 300 gallon system, which is now closer to 500 gallons with the additional tanks. What are those mistakes that I've made and what would I have done differently over the last few years that the system has been up and running? So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so just a heads up, the list of regrets slash mistakes really isn't in any particular order. They're just kind of how things came to me when I was creating the outline. So with that said, the first thing on the list here is I would have gotten a bigger calcium reactor if I knew I was going to expand the system from the 300 gallon display upwards of the 500 ish gallons that I have now between the two additional low boys and that 115 gallon grow out tub. So with that said, when I was setting up the tank and kind of designing everything from the beginning, going between customaquariums.com who built the tank, stand, tank and stand, and then Geo's Reef um, who built the um, calcium reactor, the matching ATO, and the red, white, and blue sump, I was only given a certain amount of room. I guess I probably could have gotten a bigger calcium reactor, but I really didn't think I was going to need it given that the one I have is already oversized for the 300 gallon display. But you know, then again, when you add thousands of frags on top of that with multiple tanks, it kind of lacks and falls behind. But it's okay. I ended up hooking up with Avast Marine, and they went ahead and sent me the K2 Calcster, which you guys have seen in previous videos. That thing is a powerhouse, and yeah, I burned through a lot of calc, but it's really nice. It's hooked up to the um, Apex DOS or DOS, however else you want to pronounce it, which then uh, supplies uh, saturated calc into the sump there. And between the calcium reactor and the calcster, my alkalinity and calcium levels are where they need to be. So, again, a lot of the stuff is hindsight 2020, but I. Uh, I guess I just have to take that and uh, run with it when I go ahead and upgrade and we go to the bigger 1000 and all the countless tanks that I'm going to have on the new setup. So a uh, bigger, much, much, much bigger calcium reactor is going to be in the future for the, uh, the setup for sure. The next thing on the list that I would have done differently is I would have added the grow out tanks when I first started the system. And that kind of goes back to planning the setup and kind of what I wanted to do with it. Now, I knew when I first set up the 300 gallon that it, its job was to just grow colonies. I'm going to create some YouTube videos based on it, show you guys some tips and tricks. But my ultimate goal was to uh, frag those colonies and sell them to obviously pay my bills like I do now. Now, the only thing that I really regret is not adding the bigger grow out tanks like the tub, the 115 gallon tub that I have now. I regret not adding that kind of stuff earlier on because I really could have used the space. I probably could have grown more colonies out on disc. I could have done a lot more of healing, probably could have done a ton more sales because things would have been healed and ready to go. There's just a whole bunch added to that of what ifs and what I could have possibly done if I just added those tanks early on. And really, for those of you who are setting up a display tank and you think that you're gonna sell coral in the future, just set up the frag tank alongside if you have the additional money in the space, just do it, get the plumbing done, get the one pump in there or two pumps, whatever you so choose. Get all that stuff done. That way you don't have to drill holes in the back of, a, <laughs> of the back of the sump, or not the sump, but the, the piece of wood there and adding all this additional pi piping and plumbing and all this stuff. You wouldn't have to do that um, you know, a year down the road after you've already set up the tank. So again, looking back on the setup, just a lot of things that I wish I did differently. Okay, so the next thing here is better fish selection. Now, I've talked about this quite a bit on the live streams. I have I think I've done videos about this in the past. I mean, who knows at this point? There's like 700 and something of them. I probably made this video before and I just forgot. But, you know, if I did, feel free to link it. That'd be funny. Just, you know, whatever. Anyway, um, better fish selection. Big Bertha. I've talked about her a thousand times. The Destructor, the Bulldozer, the one and only, the Big Fin, the... I don't even know what to say. I can't tell you what I say to her in, in, when we're in private because I'd probably get demonetized more than I do now. Either way, she's an awful fish, and I don't like her. <laughs> no, honestly, she she you know eats out of my hand. She lets me pet her. She's a nice fish, but she's an asshole. She destroys my entire reef tank, and that's because she's too big for the tank. Plain and simple. Uh, I would have made better decisions if I if I knew that she was going to get that. Okay, I knew she was going to get that big. I just didn't think she was going to get that big that quickly it's been three years maybe four years that i've had the tank up who knows at this point um but she's gotten massive and she's still got probably eight to nine inches more to go hopefully she'll be out of this tank before she gets that big um or i'll just gonna have to get a bigger net and, and get her out i mean i could probably still catch her because again she lets me feed her uh, by hand and she's i mean i'm not gonna say she's dumb but she's pretty dumb so i could probably catch her if i had a big enough net 
either way, uh, better fish selection. I would have gotten a lot more fish. I think that's on the list here as well. So we're probably just going to do two birds with one stone. Yep, add more fish. We're going to do two. I would have added more fish in the beginning around the same size, primarily tangs. I'm not really into like blennies and smaller fish, even though I do enjoy them, but I'm more into the utility fish. If you're wondering why I'm sounding weird, it's because I'm trying not to burp because I'm drinking uh, cranberry lime uh, seltzer water and trying to make a video. So we'll, we'll chop it up is probably not the brightest thing to do, but that's why I'm burping underneath my breath here. Either way, I would have added more fish, a lot more fish. And uh, that way we could grow the tank and I wouldn't have to worry about all the additional aggression. Everybody would know each other, grew up, best friends, and it wouldn't be a problem to add them now. Even at this point, if I want to add another tang to the 300, which I definitely wouldn't, that fish would have to be at least six or seven inches in size just to be able to survive, hopefully, uh, Big Blue and uh, Zay Zay, the cell fin tang. So between the uh, powder blue and the cell fin, uh, you really have to be a pretty big, aggressive fish to uh, outcompete that kind of uh, that kind of environment. So. Either way, I would have uh, picked better fish, and I would have picked more fish. Okay, so the next thing on the list here, which you guys have been giving me shit about for the last forever, anyways, is uh, cable management. Uh, it's not one of those things that you can just do a couple years down the road. I mean, you can. If I really wanted to, I could go through each cable one by one and, uh, you know, get them all together and make them look pretty. I'm not doing that. No way. Just... Yeah, I'll, you guys will see on the video here. So I would have done better with cable management earlier on. Uh, that way I wouldn't have the cluster of stuff that I have going on at the moment. But it is what it is. I just kind of tuck it in the corner there, put the CO2 tank in front of it, maybe put a box or two right there. You don't even see it. But either way, I would have done more cable management. Actually, I would have done any cable management because I didn't, I didn't do any at all. So I would have done that, and I will on my next build. So moving on to the next one. All right, so the next thing on the list here is to buy the better test kits just to save money on the long run. Now, what I mean by that is I have a whole bunch of uh, Aquaphorus, um, Salifert, Red Sea test kits, you name it. I have them all. I even have some Nios. Now, it's not that I, they're not good and not reliable. I just wouldn't have bought them if I knew I was going to be using HANA primarily, right? So it would have just saved me a bunch of money. Um, in hindsight, it's not really a big deal because I did end up building a whole bunch of 3D printed holders for those test kits. So again, I, you know, it's not a huge deal, but they're, they're just sitting above my tank right now. They do, they do nothing. And I haven't used them in, in God knows how long. So uh, you're probably asking, what do I use now? Well, I'm using HANA for my alkalinity, my calcium, my nit uh, not my nitrates, um, al alkalinity, calcium, um, yeah, nitrates, phosphates, what am I thinking here? <laughs> and uh, I use it for copper when I go and do like quarantining and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to magnesium, I do use the Red Sea and that's about it. So um, I do have the Trident, which does test calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. So that's kind of a backup. I can keep an eye on that on a daily basis. But uh, yeah, I just would have saved some money. And if I just got the Hannah's and what I was going to use, um, then yeah, that's about it. Okay. Uh, looks like we have four more regrets slash mistakes slash I should have did this. Uh, left on the list here. Uh, the first thing is roller mat, question mark, question mark. Um, should I got a roller mat? I don't think roller mats were even out when I had my sump built. I don't think they were because I probably would have gotten it. Um, am I going to get it for the next build? Yes, but I am going to have a place for filter socks as well, just in case I don't like the roller mat and I want to go back to my usual filter socks, which I don't have a problem with. I just got to be around uh, or not as busy and not distracted to be able to change the filter socks. And then of course, cleaning them once every couple months, it just kind of is what it is. So uh, roller mat, would I have gotten it? Yes. Uh, am I going to get it in the future? Yes. Am I going to keep it forever? I don't know. We'll see how it works. Uh, there's a lot of uh, debate up there if it's worth the price. Ver not not the actual roller mat itself, but the roller material. Is it worth it? Um, and we'll see, given how many gallons are going to be going through this roller mat, how quickly it gets clogged up, all that good stuff. And we'll figure that out when we uh, build the new setup. Now, when it comes to the next thing here, um, different power heads to save money. And the reason why I say that is I burned through a ton of Jabo power heads. Um, I, I'm not going to go off on a rant here on how much I can't stand Jabo at the moment, but. Uh, yeah, they used to be good, and now they they're not. And I've I've spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars just to burn up a pump a few months later. And because I don't really know what else I want to put in the tank at the moment, um, I just buy another one and, and go down that rabbit hole continuously. So, um, 
on the new build, I'm probably going to go with more of a recirculating type of system, maybe use a pump to um, supply flow instead of just power heads. We'll see. I don't know what I'm going to do exactly yet, but I'm definitely 100% not buying any more Jabo power heads. Nope. Their return pumps are fine. I have no issues with the DC, what is it, 15,000 I have right now, something like that. I have two of them. I have 12,000, 15,000. I think I have an 18,000. I don't know. Either way, their return pumps are fine, but their dosing pumps are not not very good anymore and um their power heads are kind of going down the same route so yeah let's go and move on to the last two okay these last two really have to do with the tanks themselves the first thing is i would not have used low boy frag tanks now yeah they're pretty cool they're cheap you can drill them relatively easily and they're they're pretty cool in that aspect but you know what else sucks when you bounce them off the wall or you you know you accidentally drop them or you bump into something and it cracks the entire tank well, Travis, maybe you shouldn't drop your tanks. Well, I do a lot of this. Let me rephrase that. I do all of this by myself. And sometimes you hit a door jam with a low boy and you break it in half and you have to go buy another one. And then you break that one again. So anyways, I wouldn't have gotten the low boys. And that's not the only reason. I wouldn't have gotten them because um, they're just not that great of a tank. The, the seal itself, the silicone is very choppy. I try to stay away from it as much as possible with the razor blades and the glass cleaters because it's just falling apart. And it's only been a couple years, a few years. Um, and, uh, they're just, it's just falling apart. Now, um, I do have three low boys currently. I have one that I don't use. It's just kind of chilling. If you're interested in that, hit me up. Um, but, uh, I got the two that I have now that just hold, um, actual grow out disc. Those are not going with me in the new setup. I'm gonna move on to something else that I can kind of bang around a little bit. I don't have to worry about the bottom blowing out and I don't have to worry about silicone. So we'll figure that out down the road, but not a big fan of the low boys. They were cool when they first came out and everybody was using them and they were good, but I just, I just, it's, the glass is too thin. It doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't work out for me. So that's just my opinion. Hopefully it doesn't upset you. If it does, uh, I don't care. Moving on to the last one. I wish I've got a bigger tank. Yeah. I would have gotten a longer tank because I couldn't have gotten any taller and I couldn't have gotten any wider because it wouldn't have fit through the door of the basement. I would have gotten it longer. I would have went 10 feet. Shit, at this point, I would have went 12 feet. That would have been really nice. Um, so I would have gotten a bigger tank from the very beginning. And that just goes to show that um, bigger is better. And uh, not, not really. But if you could get a bigger tank and you think you might want a bigger tank in the future, just get the bigger tank. If it costs you a little bit extra money, it's probably going to be worth it opposed to trying to buy an entire new setup down the road, like four or five years when you get sick of the 125 you have and you should have got the 300. If you could fit the 300, your budget can fit the 300, just get the 300, okay? And uh, this is kind of something I learned. Um, hopefully for the new build, as I mentioned before, we're looking at the four foot wide by 10 foot to 12 foot long by three foot tall, um, peninsula style, just it has to be peninsula style. I can't, my arms are not long enough for a four foot wide tank. I can barely handle what I got now. But uh, yeah, so guys, that's about it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or if you have any regrets of your own or anything you want to add to the list that you think that I might have missed after seeing all the videos and seeing my fish room, and let's just focus on the reef angle. Let's not talk about the disaster for 3D printing and the cluster of stuff I got going on. But I can make a separate video if you guys want of like bourbon over here of business regrets and things that i would have done differently because as you guys know uh this business started from a closet if you guys have been here that long i started from a closet that could barely fit in and then 3d printing just came out of nowhere and uh yeah here i am so anyways guys that's it for the video if you want to support the channel head over to fishofhex.com i got a ton of new stuff bunch of crap going on over there and uh i appreciate the support all right peace